Hello, uh, I am Dr. Subramanyam, uh, the Head of Anastasia Department. Uh, I have been a doctor for nearly 28 years now and practicing anesthesia for nearly 26 years now. Uh, along with me is Dr. Preetika. Uh, she will tell us about herself. Hi, I am Dr. Preetika. I work in the Department of Anesthesia in SERS Department. And today we will we'll have a brief talk on uh, suicide prevention. You know, on and off, uh, suddenly we hear uh, in the media uh, an young individual, an adolescent, is, he is killing himself by committing suicides. You know, as anesthetists, what we generally do every day in our life is we go and save lives when they are in a critical stage. For example, in a hospital, whenever somebody deteriorates, we run like madly so that we can resuscitate them. On and off, both of us, you know, in every day, even though you think it's anesthetist, just giving anesthesia, we spend good quality time with, this, with people. Just before going to have a surgery or anesthesia, people come out with their best. What we can say confidently is, in front of God and anesthetists, the individuals come out in their original self. And because there is fear of life, Everyone loves that. There is, when we, whenever we lose control, so people are in a very, very vulnerable zone. They come up with their best. They share their secrets. But combined, we probably have around 40 years of experience. We can say life is valued by everyone. I've practiced in India. I've practiced in Bangalore, Delhi, UK. Everywhere, life is given such an importance. But when we see young lives who are, you know, yet to bloom in their career, committing a suicide, that really pains us a lot. What do you say, Dr. Pritika? So, sir, what do you think are the most common causes for untimely deaths in young adults? If you look at now, as we get old, there are a number of reasons why people die or the life ends. When somebody dies before they have lived their life, we call, can call it as untimely, untimely death. All over the world, if you look at the untimely deaths, especially in the young, there are two reasons. Accidents and suicides. You know, accidents probably is slowly coming down. The reason is, I think, we have understood what causes accidents, especially road traffic accidents. A lot of changes have happened in how we design roads, how the vehicle is controlled, uh, education about speed limits, all those things have managed to keep it a little bit low or it is reducing. But on the other hand, if we see suicides, all across the world, the rate of suicides in young is increasing. And that is really worrying. The reason I also feel is because we don't talk about it. You know, uh, even uh, even if it happens, comes in newspaper, we all read, but we don't talk among ourselves. When people don't talk, we don't understand the reasons behind what is happening. When we don't know the reasons, we don't know what are the measures we have to adopt. And as a result, all across the board, I feel, you know, this, uh, the young individuals are you know, increasing, they are committing suicides. Reason, there are several reasons, but first thing is we need to talk, isn't it? So I wonder what's there in the young minds when they think of taking such a step. Wonderful question, Pritika. You know, uh, I often wonder why, what drives them to suicide? Is it lack of academic achievement? Are expectations from society, our parents? All of us you know, at, at some point or the other will face challenges, will face mountain-like challenges, which we find it's difficult to control. Under the weight of those expectations, under the weight of this pain. So, uh, we've often failed to see beyond what is happening. But what I feel generally is, you know, uh, whether, it, whether it's an adult or a child or a young adult, it is very important to see the bigger perspective. And we should encourage everyone to see the bigger perspective. You know, there was an interesting incident when. Um, uh, one of the chemistry professors. I, I like to tell the story because you know it's, it has some lesson in it. 
in a class full of children he gives um, a, a glass beaker full of water and he lifts it up in his hand and says what is the weight of this the children say 500 grams somebody says 600 grams and is it hurting no sir it's just 500 grams it has no bearing now the next question you ask if i continue to hold it for an hour what happens everyone says it starts to hurt your hand now next thing if i continue to hold for 24 hours what will happen to that your hand will become numb your hand will become paralyzed i see problems pain dissatisfaction unhappiness are like this glass of beaker the more we you know if you think briefly and let it go it's not much but if you keep on holding it thinking about it for a day for weeks and months it's bound to have effect on the brain i think uh, one of the things what i feel is you know, the longer we hold on to those assumptions those pain without sharing without keeping it aside so they can have an impact on the brain and you know with that pressure on us we may not see the bigger perspective we have to encourage every child every young adult to see the bigger perspective okay coming to impact uh, so what do you think uh, is the impact of social media on young minds what a wonderful question you have asked you know a lot of times if i look at my screen time you know uh, i'm glad it is still not in uh, you know it is in uh, one to two hours or three hours but i see young children spending a lot of time on the social media i strongly believe the social media is a pseudo world you know people put their best things there they never put you know what has happened what which is not uh, in, the, in the in the in the bright light so they put the picnic pictures their boyfriend pictures the girlfriend pictures pictures of wonderful paintings they have but they never share their pain etc as a result we feel everyone else around us is enjoying life but when we face the encounter when we face the challenges we feel are are i'm the only one and we get into a circle or a vicious circle where in which if we find it difficult to come out so i and also i feel personally the amount of friendship what i even you used to have uh, that gravity of friendship is lacking now lacking. so people have number of contacts but i feel uh, ability to make close friends where you can tell anything you can share anything that is something which uh, the the upcoming generation is not having i feel uh, as a parent as a as a colleague as a, as a as a brother or a sister what i think we have to encourage children is yes the, the social media has its own pluses we can use it as an advantage but we should not be slave to it we should limit the interactions and we should start in a bigger perspective and use it to an advantage is different from becoming a slave of a social media where in which entire time is spent on that and uh, getting into a loop where in which uh, everything is artificial yes right so uh, do you think as a society or uh, as parents we are creating such tremendous pressure on these young minds where they think there is no other option than suicide we talked about an individual who is facing enormous pressure it could be academic pressure it could be pressure of relationships or lack of deep relationships uh, feeling loneliness are all there but as a society you know uh, we have all been fortunate all of the grown ups we have mixed with the society established society our parents and elders have given us uh, the values such where in which we can hold on to that and we have built on to that but these young minds from the time they start seeing the world we have put them on the screens and that is not helping them so it serves our purpose that distracts them and we can do our work but there are a number of things i feel we can uh, you know uh, we need to think about we need to interact we need to educate everyone the first thing is you know uh, all these deaths whenever it happens we should call it preventable deaths 
and I don't want to see a single death happening in this in this grave. You know, sometimes I also feel, you know, uh, whenever a suicide or a death happens, suddenly it is reported in the media in a sensationalizing matter. And it is quoted that uh, this individual has committed suicide because of uh, uh, he was preparing for NEET exam, he was preparing for IIT exam. Yes, you know, the parents often uh, want their children uh, to do well in the life. Uh, they want to get uh, them admitted to the best of the institutions so that they have a security of uh, in a wonderful life. But what we ought to think is, yes, we want to give them best life, but is the exam result the only thing? What we have to focus, I feel personally feel is at the end of the education, education is about making them comprehensive. So, a wholesome development, ability to cope with stress, all this is happening or not. Sometimes I do feel, you know, uh, the colleges, uh, they also have a role to play. Yes. Thankfully, there are some government guidelines coming up, wherein which, uh, uh, you know, every school or a college is establishing, um, um, a, you know, a, a mental health coordinator. Sometimes they have established counsellors, but it is not universal. We have to identify every institution, every place where children go and mix, there should be somebody whom they can go and talk to. And uh, what also I think as society, what we have, I was studying was, we have to encourage children to make friends. And all also one of the things which, uh, you know, uh, 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 is if somebody is not doing well or feeling low, is there anybody we can recognize? I think we can recognize a lot. So when somebody is in trouble, uh, so there are usual signs. They become a bit withdrawn. They lock their rooms. They don't talk to their friends much. Uh, suddenly, you know, they are not getting sleep. Uh, they are not mixing with friends. These are all the early signs wherein which they are in deep stress. It is possible to identify these points where they are under stress and uh, you know, prevent that loop getting worse. And you might ask me, you know, people might ask me, if you identify what to do. What steps can be taken? If we Absolutely. have such, yeah. uh, someone around us where we think we recognize them and they need help. Yeah. Often when we recognize, there are a number of things which we can integrate. The first and foremost thing is I feel uh, we have to show understanding, compassion and listen to that individual. Sometimes it's just lending your ear may make them think twice and they, they, they can put them on the path of, you know, on a path which is, is, is fair. But also there are a number of help. You know? Now every individual has a friend, uh, as somebody with whom they can fight. We can get them to talk to them. And the government has initiatives, for example, the NIMHANS has a mental health uh, coordination number. Uh, the government also has set up in which people in distress can talk to those. And we can uh, escalate it in such a way that the appropriate people can be involved. Those who know how to handle the scenario, they can handle, they can help out and make sure that you know unnecessarily we don't lose a life. But unfortunately, we have got only one life. We should do everything in our hands, everything in, uh, in our hands as a community, as a government, as a society, we should make sure that we go do everything to prevent even one death.